Hi guys, Mr. Off Waffles here. This is a spoiler-free review of the new house story expansion for Dead Island 2. I'll be using gameplay from just the first sort of little chunk of the expansion, so you won't see anything that you're not supposed to see. I'm really trying to be as spoiler-free as I possibly can, but because the expansion takes place in a fairly limited environment, you are going to see stuff in the world that you'll see throughout the expansion. So, just a sort of flag that's going to happen by virtue of you watching any gameplay. Now, if you don't want a review and you just want to see a walkthrough, I've done a walkthrough. I've posted it to my Milo Plays Let's Play channel. So that's linked in the description if you'd rather watch that first and then come back and see my overall final thoughts. I'm going to evaluate the expansion on a few criteria, the first of which is the visuals. It's the aesthetic of it all. And I have to say, I absolutely love it. I think that Dead Island 2 is a game that is quite pretty overall. I think that the visual style really appeals to me just at base, and they really lean into a lot of the kind of occult and mysterious graffiti and sort of rituals and strange shrines and things in this expansion in a way that really fires me up. That sort of thing is exactly what I love in any media, and so to get an opportunity to kind of play around with some of that stuff in Dead Island 2 is a joy. I really enjoyed some of the very kind of dystopian and bare bones areas that then had slightly weird kind of geometries to them, like a corridor that would just keep on going down into the ground and things along those lines. And so overall, the aesthetic and the visuals of this expansion are very strong in my opinion. I do wish there had been more to that, and I'll get onto that more towards the end of the review. But just evaluating the things that I was seeing, I really enjoyed all of that. It kind of gave me a control vibe. It was that sort of theming, I think, throughout a lot of this. And yeah, it's a thumbs up in my book. Now, story-wise, again, without spoilers, I think this is going to have somewhat mixed reception. I thought that there were things in here that were really, really good. I thought that some of the little notes that you can find were really funny. There's one, and I won't spoil it, but it's to do with rubber ducks and... <laughs> I just really sort of like found myself chuckling reading it. I thought it was great. I think the the overall tone of what they're doing with the narrative here is very cool. And I like the way that it plugs in to the wider narrative of Dead Island 2. This isn't an expansion which just sort of has you entering this place, doing some stuff that is inconsequential for the wider world, and then leaving and forgetting about it five minutes later. It actually does feel like it has some consequence for the wider plot, which is really important because... That wider Dead Island 2 plot still has actually quite a lot of questions left open to the player's interpretation to be answered in story expansions such as this one. And so the fact that this started going there is really good. And it does so in a, a satisfying way for me personally as someone that's a fan of constantly having lots of questions to answer, constantly having lots of mystery present, etc. Lots of secrets, lots of uh, kind of loose ends and loose threads. But if you're looking for this expansion to completely tie up any questions you might have had from the main game, it's not really the expansion for you. I think that the Dead Island 2 team's writing style, their narrative style, is very much to prod you with kind of interesting prompts, but then to leave you wondering about things for future payoffs. And the same goes here. And I think that some people just transparently are probably going to feel like that's not quite enough and they want more. Now, obviously, this is the first expansion in a multiple expansion pass. And as such, in the next one, we may get all of the answers to all of the questions of Dead Island 2's main campaign and all of the questions of this. Like, maybe it will simply tie everything together in a neat little bow. But the fact that this is an individual expansion and I'm only reviewing this expansion in isolation right now means that I can't give it full marks for story just because I know some people will wish that it was a little bit more complete within the DLC itself rather than requiring future content to really kind of flesh out and finalize some of the questions that it poses. But if I was being selfish for a minute and purely evaluating it on my taste, this is so up my street. It's so the perfect thing for me. It's exactly what I would be hoping for more of in a Dead Island game. So I'm giving it double thumbs up on the Milo scale, but just recognizing that I think some people will probably feel differently. Now let's talk gameplay. I'm going to split this up into some new weapons stuff and some puzzle stuff. New weapons wise, I wasn't blown away transparently by this expansion. I thought that it was kind of cool. There was some cool stuff in there, but 
it wasn't something that I'm going to be thinking about for days, weeks, or months to come. Now, puzzles-wise, I, I feel like it was a little bit less handheld, perhaps, than the main game, which was cool. And it meant that I could sort of apply some critical thinking to solving some of those puzzles. And I, I appreciated that, especially because the narrative kind of has this sort of riddles theme to it. Or not really fully riddles, but certainly an air of self-discovery for the person going on this journey. It'll make sense when you play it. And so the fact that the game gives the player room to tap into that themselves a little bit is fun. I do, to be honest, think they could have gone a lot further in that area. I think that some actual significant puzzle solving would have been so much fun in this expansion because ultimately you're in this house environment, making it into some kind of escape room kind of experience could have been so enjoyable but they didn't really fully lean into that and instead the puzzles that are there are pretty rudimentary at best and i i, I would also say that because of the slightly less handheld nature of it which i think is a good thing overall sort of in net consideration it also means that in certain areas i actually thought the game was just busted and broken because i hadn't quite noticed that there was still an objective that i had to do in order to progress so for instance there's one area where you've got to destroy three things in order to proceed and i destroyed two but then thought that the second one had glitched out and i didn't think there was a third one and so i was like reloading my save and doing all this stuff just because visually it didn't give me like really obvious clear feedback that the thing i had destroyed had actually had an impact on the world i'm trying to be very vague here again just to avoid spoilers but these sorts of things happened to me a few times another time i had a quest item and then a thing happened the quest item despawned had to reload my save it's a bug that the devs are aware of so i suspect it will be fixed when you play it but still it's just things like this the kind of cause a little bit of a hiccup in the momentum of walking through a story expansion like this one and that brings me to the final consideration which is the length and price and i know that some people would consider just knowing the length of the expansion a spoiler so keep in mind that's what i'm about to say to you cover your ears if you need to the main bulk of the expansion inside the house itself the act one and the act two of it took me about three hours and there's a little bit more content in there don't get me wrong there's some side questy stuff there's some other kind of puzzly stuff that i can go back and replay that area for and so there is there is more there don't get me wrong but the main meat of it is about three hours and i feel like in an expansion pass that is a 30 dollar pass for i think two expansions and for a story that already had a lot of questions left at the end of it in the main game i feel like some people are going to get through this and just be left wishing there was more and if the next expansion they put out in this double whammy expansion pass isn't a fair bit longer and doesn't answer a lot more of these questions in a more comprehensive way i think people are going to be really upset because i mean if you split it in half this is 15 bucks for three hours of gameplay maybe an extra hour or two for the side questy stuff and it didn't feel like a huge amount more for me now, maybe there's bits and pieces I haven't found yet, but ultimately it, it just felt pretty narrow in scope. And so despite loving the aesthetic of what they've created, despite loving the questions that they are posing with the narrative and thinking that, yeah, I mean, the weapons were cool, I guess. I think that some people are going to play through house and just wish for more. And so as a result, despite the fact that the Dead Island 2 base game for me was like a 9 out of 10, I had such a blast with it. This expansion is like a weird hybrid of lengthwise, I would rate it like a four but aesthetic and, and and what i did get like what i could taste was delicious and it was maybe like an eight but there's just not enough of it and so I'm, I'm looking forward to the next expansion but if you haven't yet got the expansion pass i don't know if you necessarily want to pick it up just based on house alone like i said though if you want to evaluate this for yourself i've got a link in the description to my full walkthrough of the dlc so you can check that out and see what you think drop a like if you've enjoyed this video and i'll see you next time thanks bye for now